Hey everybody, it's Andy with True Blue Quilts and today I'm going to share some more tips about foundation paper piecing, especially what to do once you're done with your whole block. Let's get ready to take that paper off. I'm Andy and this is True Blue Quilts, a place to enjoy, experiment, and excel as you quilt. There is some debate about what you should use when you are foundation paper piecing. Is it okay to use regular copy paper or do you need something special like this Carol Dokes brand foundation paper? I have to admit, it is easier to use Carol's paper. It's a newsprint type um, weight so it rips off very easily and she says it's specially formulated to take the ink and not transfer ink to your paper so keep that in mind if you see that in your local quilt store grab some of that foundation paper some people have contacted local printers and they can get newsprint on a roll and cut that down to size to use in a computer printer. I have also had good luck just grabbing the regular, you know, white 20 pound paper that I run through my printer, print off my block and paper piece with no problem. So make sure you are using a short stitch length and that will make getting the paper off much easier. Some other little tips. Keep a spray bottle handy because if you spritz your your paper, uh, just a light mist, we're not soaking anything down, just a light mist of water will soften up that paper and make it a little bit easier to rip apart at the end. If you wanna see that, stay tuned. Okay, a bonus tip for paper piecing. I am sewing pieces together and I have my pin right at the intersection and I can tell I'm at the intersection because I'm right on my seam line and right in line with that seam line of the paper and so I flip it over and make sure I've come through at the same exact point on the other page and I'm going to leave that pin sitting vertically through my papers while I take another pin and pin my layers together. Same thing, I'm keeping that all lined up and I'm gonna pin on the other side of that block. So then that pin, now everything's together, that pin can come out and I can double check that I've got it lined up right on the seam line on both sides and these other pins kept everything in place. And now I am ready to sew my block together. When you get all your fabric sewn onto the paper foundation, you may think, great, it's time to rip all that paper off. But don't go too fast on that. You want to make sure that all the paper pieced units are surrounded by another piece of fabric. So you never want to rip the paper off if there's if that fabric isn't finished yet, finished within its block. So I've put a border around my paper pieced block. This is a traditional double pinwheel block. And yes, you can make this block from half square triangles and quarter square triangles, but I was actually using these units in a different quilt and I didn't want to stop and calculate all the math for those smaller units. So I just printed some fabric foundations and went to town with that. So you can see on the back, all my paper, I have my border fabric on all four sides. So now I'm ready to rip off the paper. When you rip the paper off, I'm going to start with this edge. You want to pull towards the stitches. So I'm not trying to rip away from the stitches. I'm gonna pull that paper towards the stitches and it will rip off very easily, just like taking apart uh, perforated stuff from like, you know, ripping a check out of the checkbook, if you remember those old fashioned ways. Uh, and this big triangle 
is still connected, but I've got that loose edge where I just took off the one piece of paper, and now I can just rip again towards that seam line, and that rips very easily across there. Hold the, the pieces of fabric together, and I got some of the seam allowance edge and most of that triangle uh, peeled away. You may need some tweezers to get in there and get those little bits that didn't come off right away, but with some diligent effort, you can get all those papers ripped away from your block. Um, again, ripping off the papers is a little bit of a tedious chore that we need to do, so pop in your favorite movie or Netflix and tear away with a trash can handy for all those bits of paper. Let me try another camera angle and show you what I was doing with ripping that paper off. I am making sure I'm only holding the paper, you know, if you need to rip just a small section and then rip towards the, the stitches and those stitches provide a barrier. And like I said, sometimes you just get those little bits torn away. And then once you've got uh, two sides to your uh, piece torn apart, that should just lift out really easy. I usually try to get my finger up in there and pop any of the last bits. Again, now I need to tear towards these stitches. So I'm gonna hold that down and tear right across there. Then this yellow one should pop up. Notice I just lift it up from underneath and I just have that final seam. Notice I've tried to press all my seams flat. That um, reduces the bulk with the small stitch length. I'm not worried about the, um, the strength of that seam. I know it's gonna hold there with those small stitches. Now I need to remember to grab that bit of paper from the seam allowance there, and I'm gonna have to come back in and do some cleanup with some tweezers there on those small bits, things that have gotten you know, caught underneath in the um, in the seams as you cross your seams when you're putting that four patch block together. So again, I'll start from one side of my block, tear that paper away, get underneath. If I need to rip across the middle of a section to get that piece out, I will do that and Good way to get your aggressions out if those people in the Walmart parking lot were annoying you today. You can just come home and rip away. And rip. And there we go with the paper torn away from two sections and we've got our double pinwheel block. Visit tamarinis.com. She has great tutorials on her blog. Are you ready to try paper piecing yourself? Start with this gnome pattern linked in the video below and hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.